Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Fancast webinar, a use and ingest of metadata in audio distribution. I'm really pleased to uh, welcome you. Uh, thanks for joining us and uh, taking time out today. Today, we will discuss how to handle metadata in audio distribution applications, how best to deliver it, and how to get the most out of modern metadata features to create the best experience for the listeners. This webinar will last 45 minutes, and there will be time at the end for questions. Please feel free to uh, to write your question in the chat to everybody. Our fancast experts are there and uh, they can uh, answer your questions uh, directly uh, uh, also in the, in the chat. You will also get a chance to win a fancast t-shirt so, uh, with our traditional quiz, so uh, stay tuned. And last information, we will be uh, sending out the recording, the webinar recording to all of you by the end of the week. Let me introduce now the speakers of the day. Tobias Dornbusch, product expert at Fancast. Bernd Geiser, senior audio engineer at Fancast. And Declan Wieser, CEO and co-founder of Fancast. Let's have a look now at the agenda. Detlef Fieser is going first to give a short introduction of Fancast history and applications. Then uh, Bernd Geiser will cover metadata concept in extreme, including challenges and use cases. And finally, Tobias Dornbusch will show you um, the ingest metadata functionalities in extreme software. And as I mentioned, there will be time at the end for some uh, Q&A session. I'm going now to uh, give the floor to Detlef Fieser for the introduction. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. I see that we have, again, a very international audience coming from uh, different countries. Yeah, in brief, I would like to um, give you a bit of an introduction to um, Ferncast. We started uh, end of 2018 with the main objective to develop um, a software for 24-7 live audio applications with a focus on broadcasting. From 2018 onwards, we had a continuous development, found customers in the public and private radio field, and it turned out that we actually have at the moment a software which is covering a very wide range of applications, and the software we also apply in hardware. So our offer to the market is a pure software, but it's also um, the software packaged and tailored to hardware devices. So there are two main directions. Situation at Fancast, we are a um, reasonably sized team, consists of some former Maya people and IKS PhDs, master science people, developers. Um, we have a very agile dynamic team, which is focused on fulfilling customer needs and delivery to customer needs in a way that our mainstream product extreme is growing and can benefit from uh, customer inputs and customer requests. Totally, actually, there is already an amount of more than much more than 30 person years development, although we have a very reasonable short time in the market. We started with um, Deutschland Radio in 2019 and then other public radios. Uh, in Germany, we can actually say and we are very proud to say that we are the number one of encoding uh, streaming software in public radio. The footprint is uh, slowly growing. Also internationally, we find customers. And um, so the applications run really from streaming to SIP, WebRTC, studio transmitter links, loudness processing. Our software is actually acting, um, and you can compare it a bit with the matrix. So we have inputs and outputs, and in between we have uh, 
variable number of um, processing points uh, for you know creating protocols, um, processing the audio signal, doing encoding, doing, doing a variety of things. And I think later on, in particular, in connection with our topic today, the ingest of metadata, uh, where we have a focus, a clear focus today, um, you will see also the, the possibilities. On the overview of applications, actually, there is quite a range where we uh, already have um, extreme in place uh, will not go in depth here I think it uh, will just give you this impression of uh, of this slide but it's it's a quite wide range um, mainly all live applications 24 7 or temporary live applications with a very few exceptions like the the podcast creation is more file based loudness can be both can be real time or file based everything else the zip web rtc the stl um, is all based on on live applications plus we also offer some services either hosting the complete service for for customers um, doing also the the streaming the protocols the conversion the multiplexing um, and also a service like, for instance, a, a SIP server uh, service we provide to, uh, to our customers. I think with the next slide, I will give the word to Tobias. Yeah. Just to explain this very quickly, because maybe it will also help uh, lay the groundwork for understanding some of the things that Bernd will talk about. Um, the way how we configure con um, communication calls, etc., in iXtreme is the the pipe concept, which models the entire audio workflow from the input to the output, from the the source to the sync, as this row of elements, which each element being one part of uh, the process, from you know the encoding, but also all sorts of audio processing that may be happening, including, of course, as you can see in the screenshot here, um, the metadata inserter element. And this is also something that Bernd and of course later I will reference and talk a bit about more in detail. Thanks Tobias, but before I leave the floor to uh, Bernd, it's time for a quiz. How long does it take for a radio signal to travel from Earth to the Moon and back? So as I say, it's an easy one because last time we didn't get a winner, but you have to be uh, fast and precise. So now I will uh, uh, leave the floor to Bernd. There I go. Okay, yeah, so hello everyone. Going to full screen, so okay. Yes, um, I will talk about the concept that we have implemented in our uh, main software product, Extreme, to handle the metadata. And uh, with metadata, it's a topic where you always face different challenges. Can be difficult sometimes, and every time it works differently, I guess. And um, there are a lot of use cases. So for the challenges, uh, yes, um, metadata. What is it? First, it, it gives you, of course, a description of the content that that you're playing out, but it may also contain some system-related content uh, on the encoder itself, internal station information, whatever. And you have to think about how to put that data to the encoder and the format you want to get it out of it and uh, the exact information and the timing. Um, you have to consider the format capabilities of your playout format. You have to dig into standards. Uh, you have to look at uh, media players. How, what do they support actually? Uh, metadata can be dynamic, it can be static. Uh, you may have to think of fallback procedures and uh, yeah, the encoding is always a bad thing, especially with text metadata. Yeah, so all in all, um, there are many standards and uh, yeah, it might look like uh, a tricky, complicated situation. And um, yeah, one might think, well, uh, why not give it a shot and, 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 and uh, unify that all? Um, I must admit, I do not think we are in the position to, to give that general, uh, to, to develop that general standard. So if we would give it a shot, then yeah, it would be just one standard more, I guess. So um, how I see us is, is more like this. <laughs> um, we are working in, 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 in a, yeah, complex ecosystem, but we want to make it easy for our customers to use what they actually want. 
And uh, here's how we organized uh, the metadata in our software. So all the centralized around these metadata objects. Um, so that is one yeah, data set essentially describing um, the, the uh, content of the, the played audio or uh, some internal stuff, as I mentioned. And uh, we have several input methods and um, this is on a continuous development essentially. And we have outputs. Uh, for outputs, you have two options. There is um, a direct output here where uh, we can forward metadata or um, output it on dedicated paths or protocols, or we can use it in to in, use the metadata and embed it in our audio stream. So this is the pipe group output and this red one this, uh, is the metadata inserter element in an uh, audio stream, an audio pipe, which in our system. And uh, once you put the metadata object, uh, you, you put a link here, uh, you can use it in all subsequent pipe elements. Um, I will give examples later. Um, so for the metadata object, uh, what are the supported fields? Um, it's for uh, first thing, it's static, static data. For example, if you're a radio station, you can put station information, a name, website, whatever, and uh, maybe something on the encoder. Then uh, the current playout item is described, title, artist, composer, whatever you might think of. So there are lots of options. Uh, one thing which is um, not so common, but, but very useful maybe for um, audio on demand uh, content is a chapter structure so that you can uh, jump to, to um, chapters. So we also support that. And uh, for some use cases, we also have a description of an upcoming item. So uh, what is next? Yeah, so that's, uh, for example, for the Wybrick use case. I'll talk about a little about that later. You can also put auxiliary web links uh, or images or links to images, internal use data, whatever. So that's very extensive. Yeah, we have quite a number of customers using our metadata system. Um, for the bigger ones, it's, I think, mainly the German public broadcasters. And they are using um, the metadata system in one or the other way. So we have several options, as I will show you. And um, now I will go through the options we provide to uh, yeah, give you a picture of what we can do. Um, OK, so starting with the ingest. So how uh, do I get metadata into our system? And the first method is. Uh, that's why it's bold. It's, it's the recommended one by us. And um, yeah, many customers use it actually. So you can directly interact with the metadata object in our system via an API. So you push uh, with a connector script or a connector software to uh, this object with, you can use just standard HTTP requests. Um, and usually you, you uh, use a system user which has restricted access, access rights. So uh, you can only change the metadata for example, of one station or of all stations as you wish. <clears throat> okay, then an, another ingest method is um, uh, yeah, radio data system UDCP via UDP. So you receive a UDP stream formatted as UDCP, and this is parsed in a BIOS software, and um, then uh, the, the fields in the metadata object are filled in accordingly. So you can figure also that. Another option is you have uh, text files with some metadata on an HTTC for, uh, HTTP server. That is in pull mode, so you can configure a polling interval and uh, selectable target field in this metadata object will be used and filled with a text from that HTTP server. Um, or another option is to reuse metadata from pipe source elements. So if you configure an audio stream in extreme, you have, for example, a file source or a source from some Icecast server. And uh, those are things which already provide metadata, so you can just pick them up from uh, that source and, and reuse them. But that's not all. So uh, there are more things where you can grab metadata from. And one thing is um, that was also the topic a little bit of the last webinar is the demultiplexing feature. So in our system, you can configure demultiplexers. Um, that's mainly for radio reception from, from various standards, DAB, FM, or DVB, for example. 
And all these uh, demultiplexers automatically create and update metadata objects for each channel which they receive. And you can reuse these metadata objects for uh, some outgoing stream very easily. So for DAB reception, uh, we have the option of a deck tech card or an UDP stream with EDI uh, format. And you can grab the metadata from that. For his FM reception, we have our own hardware units, the fan FM. Or uh, as a future plan, you can have an MPX stream and we uh, will extract the RDS from that and the data object will be set up and it's ready to use. And um, there may also be options for a DVB reception. So if it's a transport stream that you receive, for example, via UDP or ASI could also be. Yeah, another thing which will be coming, um, which is quite new is that metadata objects and um, are automatically created and updated from um, program schedules. So um, that's one of our recent projects um, to integrate support for the uh, Music Master radio scheduling software. And uh, yeah, we will directly support that and then create metadata from the schedule that is set up in there. And another planned thing is, uh, which is a simple use case, but, but for, for smaller projects, maybe the best. That's why we came up with this, um, that you can use a simple webhook. You pass a token and uh, a metadata stream, and, and that's it. So it's just one HTTP request in that case. So that's a whole lot of methods uh, to get metadata into the system. Yeah, and now for the output into our pipe. So this is how a pipe might look like. Uh, where you have some source, you have the metadata inserter, a codec, and for example, an icecast sync. And if you click in our software on this metadata inserter, you get this configuration dialog. And there you see three options for metadata. So in each option, base, overlay, and fallback, you can select one object. And that has a purpose. Uh, so the base metadata is intended uh, for static information. So you can put your station name there or a website or whatever. So things that do not change over time. The overlay object is intended for dynamic information. So you can have a song title. And uh, this overlay object, as says the name, is overlaid onto the base object and it's merged with that. So um, that you only have uh, to update the dynamic stuff and you can configure the static stuff separately from that. You do not have to do this. You can also put everything in the overlay object. It's an option. But we also provide, uh, which is quite nice, the fallback um, configuration. So there's a fallback timeout. So if the overlay is not updated for the given period of, for example, 60 seconds, then uh, the um, playout of the metadata is switched back to the fallback. So uh, the avoids a display of outdated song titles or something, and you can show a default text instead in case something is wrong with the ingest of the metadata. Yeah, for the pipe output formats, that's um, also a whole lot we support in the meantime. There are things which are container specific. Uh, so if you put your audio in, in, in a typical audio container, uh, for example, you can use with AAC or MP3, you can use the ID3 format, uh, the MP4 file format, which is used for HLS has certain metadata fields, um, the OC container, the Matroska container, whatever you like, uh, does have a certain support. And we also, if possible, support the chapters here. So you can, if you're producing podcasts with our system, uh, you can integrate um, audio chapters and directly navigate to certain points within that podcast. Yeah, then we, uh, of course, have protocol specific metadata things. Uh, Icecast is obvious, RTMP, HLS has uh, certain ways to deliver metadata, Dash, of course, also, and uh, Ybrid, which is um, particularly particular playout method, which is, yeah, covers the use case of, of uh, let's say, dynamic radio, skip radio wake, you can say, okay, I don't like the song, uh, skip to an alternative, and it will you bring back to the live stream as, as soon as uh, time for that song is over. And um, yeah, that is also a certain thing we support, and it's already in use uh, with one of our, our customers. Then, um, yeah, on-demand HLS with chapter support, uh, just to repeat that. Uh, so if you have podcasting, the chapter support. And uh, 
another use case for metadata output is the um, DVB and PTS, where you can put um, UECP encoded metadata into it. So um, you can use pass through mode. So you have another UCP encoder receive that and directly pass it through to the uh, MPTS stream, or you we can also locally encode it. So uh, you in that case you uh, update our metadata object via another method. So for example via the API, and uh, we encode the UCP for you. Um, we do not yet support the full standard, but uh, to a reasonable extent. So what customers requested so far. And uh, yeah, you can use our generated UCP then in the MPEG-TS. Uh, there are two options for that and uh, reserve a um, separate stream in the MPEG-TS, so a separate PID for the metadata, um, or you can embed the, the UCP metadata in the encoded audio via ancillary data. So that's often used and possible for AAC or for example, MP2. <clears throat> the typical use cases. Um, yes, so far that was for the pipe output via metadata inserter. So um, when it directly goes into our output audio streams, but we can of course also output metadata only, and that's why I call it direct output. So um, the, these direct outputs are not configured in the audio pipes in our system, but they are configured directly from within the metadata object. So you go to its edit view and uh, here's an example for UECP output. And for this metadata object, you can configure a number of UDP destinations where it should go. So um, this UECP encoded data is, for example, then sent via UDP. Another example for direct output is, of course, we can send metadata to other ISCA servers if you want. And uh, a recent thing is quantum cast Metaport API quantum cast is uh, yeah, a content delivery network provider. And they have their own um, API for metadata. Um, that is because the usual ice cast is quite limited. Uh, so that's also a um, more enhanced uh, set of metadata and we directly support that and we um, just translate our internal metadata objects into the quantum cast objects basically and, and support a lot of things there. Uh, yeah, so yeah, a lot of a lot to digest, I guess. And uh, yeah, still, you might be confused with that situation. And uh, yeah, frankly, I must admit, we are, I, I, or I can repeat only myself, uh, we are not in the position to make it easier, but we can make it as easy as possible for you. So uh, the complete picture is not yet covered by Extreme and, and probably never will. But what we have is a quite flexible and extensible metadata infrastructure. So all the requests that we had so far, we could uh, quite easily integrate that. And um, so uh, my takeaway uh, take message would be, if you have anything which is new, unsupported or incomplete for us, so just ask uh, the chance is high that uh, we can easily integrate your use case. And uh, I'm also a little bit curious, maybe if you have something in mind already, you can right now post it in the chat. So if something was missing in my whole long list, <laughs> I would be curious. Yeah, so that was my part. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Bernd, for this uh, complete uh, overview. Yes, please, if you have some uh, questions or requests, please use, use the chat to uh, everybody or to Bernd if you have a specific uh, request. Um, now, uh, Tobias is going to uh, show you the metadata functionalities in uh, Extreme software. Yes, uh, thank you, Virginie. So uh, effectively, what I'm going to talk about here is uh, first actually give you a, a broader look at uh, iXtream as a whole. Obviously, uh, Bernd had already um, referenced some of these things and also maybe show a bit more in detail how some of the things that Bernd has mentioned uh, actually look and work in iXtream as well as some other functionality that he sometimes has, sometimes maybe uh, only uh, touched upon lightly and just give you a bit of a closer look there. Also, we're currently on our uh, public demo system. So if you uh, ever feel like uh, playing around with some of the features we talk about or other features that we have talked about in other webinars, 
then uh, feel free to just contact us to receive the access credentials. And then, of course, you can just uh, play around with these things yourself or receive an actual demo installation at some point. Yeah, with that said, we are currently in the uh, pipes menu, as I uh, described earlier. Um, pipes is, in fact, how we do the uh, general connection configuration, including, for example, metadata. So as an example here, what you see at the top, um, this would be a, a regular audio input, maybe like analog or a digital audio interface that's connected that is uh, feeding audio. Uh, volume control is enabled, uh, level is being measured, this is MP3 encoded, and then goes out as an ICECAST stream, for example. In this particular case, actually without a, a metadata element, but uh, that's what we're going to take a uh, look at now. So when we're creating a whole new pipe, then you see uh, this menu here with the full selection, uh, depending on your installation, of course, of uh, different sources, audio processing elements, encoders, and uh, sinks, that is to say the, the outputs or destinations that we offer, including, of course, the metadata inserter here among the audio processing elements. This is, of course, the main focus here today. Just to give you a, uh, a simple example of how it would look if you are setting up a uh, simple AA67 to IceCast connection with metadata, this could look something like this. So you have an audio over IP, that would be the AA67 in fact, input, a level meter and volume control because people usually want that, a metadata inserter. Um, yeah, let's also assume MP3 encoding here and then the IceCast sync at the end. And that would be the, the basic configuration of the, the pipe there. Um, of course, you would need to have a way to actually do detailed configuration, like for instance, with the encoder, the setting the bit rate and also some encoder specific settings. If you enable the, the expert view head here at the top and things like the uh, destination addresses, like the IP of the IceCast server here, for example, and uh, the protocol version in the case of IceCast and so on and so on. But of course, the most important aspect here is the metadata object or element rather, where you can see the um, this screenshot that Bernd has shown you earlier, just to very quickly reiterate, you technically don't need to use the different levels of uh, metadata, how we have organized it, but we found it as a, uh, a very convenient way to handle the most metadata workflows so base would be or is intended for information for tags that are not supposed to change like uh, your radio station name etc overlay would be the one that you're actually feeding and live updating with http usp api etc and uh, fallback would be of course the layer for when the overlay metadata is not available anymore because connection uh, is lost or maybe there's been some other mess up uh, in the workflow, then there's just some, uh, well, fallback uh, information that will be displayed. Now, if we actually go into one of these, we can uh, see the uh, different options that uh, Bernd had already described, the, of course, configuring the USP input via the port, for example, or the HTTP via the, the URL that can be pulled, or, that was also mentioned, uh, configuring it via the API that the this particular element is uh, updated regularly. And then, of course, you have your various tags. Um, this is the uh, short list uh, because we're currently in the default view. But uh, with the expert view, you can actually see the whole range of ID3 tags that you can um, populate as desired, either uh, setting the values yourself or, of course, um, using these the HTTP, USP, et cetera, um, updates and so on. And yeah, this way you would do the uh, static or dynamic updates of the metadata, which are then of course embedded in the um, audio as you would expect. Then we had also mentioned the pass-through functionality, just to give you a different example of how that could be used for um, we would not set a metadata inserter here in this case. So the example that I'd quickly clicked together here um, could be 
pipe where you are demoxing uh, a large ensemble or multiplex, for example, a DVB or a DAB ensemble or an FM signal and so on. And simply, actually, I should not even have AAC in this particular example. Um, you can enable uh, the pass-through mode, which mainly or originally was actually focused on um, not doing a, uh, a re-encode. So uh, the audio is basically passed through without being decoded and then re-encoded. But similarly, you can, of course, uh, pass through um, the metadata information as well. So in this example, you would have the uh, the ensemble or the multiplex that is coming in that is being demultiplex. You have a, a specific channel selected or program that you want to use as input and is then um, turned into a uh, new MPEG TS um, output, which could be, in this example, it would be a, a single program stream, even, but you could also configure it for a multi-program stream and it would still have the the same metadata information that has been um, taken from the input in this example. All right. Then we also talked a little bit about our on-demand and uh, podcasting functionality. The basic configuration of uh, how to handle metadata actually works uh, similarly. You would also prepare a, uh, a pipe to define exactly how the, the metadata is embedded and the uh, the audio encoding is done and so on. But of course, in that particular case, since it's non-live, um, there are some other aspects to this. For example, okay, how does the system get the, the audio files, the existing metadata files for the, the embedding and encoding, et cetera. And for this, we have actually created this uh, wizard that guides the user through every step of how to uh, configure their, their podcasting processing their workflow effectively. And of course, one section of this is the uh, metadata ingest. The important aspects here, are of course, first the transport, I already mentioned this, the metadata needs to already exist somewhere. In this case, we can actually use uh, classic transport protocols. As you can recognize here, those are transport protocols like classics like FTP, Zamba, etc to uh, simply take the uh, metadata from a remote location, though it could also be uh, something that is locally stored. Um, so on the system storage of the iStream system, for example, and then you can do various checks to verify the uh, metadata, in fact, but the really interesting aspect, I think, is the uh, what we call the metadata mapper. And this is a functionality that allows you to um, define specific tags or uh, tag expressions that are found in the metadata that will tell the system how to, for example, uh, encode. Effectively, what you're doing, you say, if pipe X is found in the metadata, then use this pipe for the processing. So for instance, you could say, uh, then encode it with MP3 at 256 k bits, for example. But if it is tag Y, for example, then encode it as AAC with 128, for example, and maybe upload it to a, a different end locale and so on. And this can be defined here where you have different entries. You, of course, set the um, the specific tags to look for and what um, the uh, deciders are, basically. <laughs> also, maybe uh, very quickly, uh, nice to show you. Of course, we can receive or we can use an existing URL that is on the, the public internet as, a, uh, as an input for IceCast streams. But we can also run the system as an IceCast server to directly receive IceCast streams. Um, the reason why this is uh, interesting for metadata use cases in some cases is, of course, similarly with the pass-through, you could receive an existing IceCast stream with metadata included and then reuse that metadata for different outputs, for example. What is also 
relevant for this. Bernd mentioned that uh, if you're using the API to uh, feed the metadata updates, then of course you need a, uh, a specific user for that so that you have a user that is for updating the, the metadata. And in fact, we do have a very extensive uh, user role management. And of course, one of the entries that you can configure is in fact, obviously the, the metadata ingest besides creating these API users that are only there for updating the, the metadata objects. Of course, you could also do things like uh, having a, an actual person who is a metadata manager. So you define specific um, things they can do to uh, set new HTTP ingests, new UECP inputs, etc. So this would also be a, a possibility. And in fact, if you set the right limitations, then you can even set it up so that this uh, metadata manager, this hypothetical metadata manager can only do very specific aspects of the uh, or manage of the, the the UI in this case of course only the the metadata management and the very last thing I want to show you real quick here we also now have actually a separate menu specifically for metadata management um, this actually can use the same objects that you saw or use with the metadata inserter in fact the Big advantage is here simply that you can uh, more freely and also generally more easily uh, set up all the various uh, inputs that you might want to use, also outputs, of course, in the case of the UECP, and then just uh, yeah assign these in the respective metadata inserter elements when you're configuring the pipes. That would be it from me. Back to Virginie. Thanks, uh, Tobias, for this. Uh... For the demo, uh, I will share my screen again. So um, the moon is uh, moving on an elliptic uh, orbit. So that means the um, the difference, uh, the distance from the moon to the Earth is varying. Uh, the average distance between moon and Earth is 384,000 kilometers. And one answer is based on that assumption. And the other answer we got also is, um, so that was the 2.5 seconds. And then the, um, the answer with the um, 2.66 seconds is based on 400,000 kilometer. And I think this is uh, as well a good answer because today um, the moon distance is pretty far. It's almost um, 399, not, not completely, but 399,000 kilometers. And uh, yeah, it's actually the distance. Um, so um, forward, backward divided by light speed is the result. So from my opinion here, I think hopefully also from the two team opinion, uh, both deserve the uh, the T-shirt today. The so Katarina and also Manuel. Um, I think that would be a good thing. Yeah. So congratulations, Manuel and Katarina. We got them today uh, two winners and thanks for your participation to the quiz we are now uh, coming to the end of of the webinar i just would like to remind you the our upcoming webinars uh, so please save the date our up next webinar will be on june 27 it will be on uh, reliable audio communication via sip and we are already planned also one webinar in July, the 11th, um, and it will be on the calculation of your streaming network. We would like to ask you also, ask you if you have some uh, needs or ideas or requests, if you have uh, specific topics we, you would like us to, uh, to cover, we will be uh, happy to do so. We try to have a webinar every uh, six weeks. So please, you can uh, send us some uh, request our emails to Tobias, for instance, which is always uh, available for you. Uh, if you'd like to have a demo or if you have a specific uh, request, please uh, contact, uh, contact Tobias. We are now, as I said, at the end of the webinar. Manuel says it's already crystal clear. So we did a good job. For the, for Thanks, the moon, uh, <laughs> or for both, yeah. Yeah, so thanks a lot again for your for your time today, for your participation. Uh, we are always uh, uh, 
uh, happy to have this webinar and uh, to be with you. Um, we hope to see you in our next webinar, then in, uh, in June. And well, I wish you a, a pleasant day still and uh, see you soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye.